Welcome. My name is Jeff Baker, Jeffrey Reed Baker on my albums. And a uh, number of years ago, I discovered while I was doing an album called The Fantastic World of Franz Liszt, and also on The Fantastic World of George Gershwin, that a, a particular trick that I used to compose a couple of pieces, and it was a lot of fun, and I used step time uh, to do them. And I think step time is somewhat underrated as a uh, note input um, tool. So I want to show you at least one of the tricks that I use to do to input notes for those pieces, which I think you'll find again a lot of fun, whatever. So let me sh let let's start and let's try to recreate a piece that we already know. Let's do the Bach minuet in G. Jum ba 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 bum bum bum. We all know that one. So let's start by first of all opening up a new file in. Digital Performer 9, or it could be 8, doesn't really matter. And let's um, bring back uh, the start at 110, but that really doesn't matter, nor does the conductor matter whether it's on or off. Let's eliminate any tracks that you may have down here by clicking on them and going to Project Delete Tracks. Um, and then let's add a couple of MIDI tracks. Go to Project, Add Track, MIDI Track you'll see it pop up here. Go to Project, Add Track, MIDI Track. Now what I'd like to do, just for the sake of, so we don't get confused, let's Option click on MIDI 1 and type a capital R for right hand. And let's Option click on MIDI 2 and put a capital L for left hand. You can turn off the record icon. Doesn't really matter, except you may, oh right, and we want to set this for piano. So let's go over here and in my case, I'm going to set an Apple Software Synth on both tracks, both on one, Apple Software Synth 1, and put an Acoustic Grand Piano, which is the default. Um, and then I'm going to close this window up, and I'm going to test the, <clears throat> the piano. Beautiful. Okay. So, what we want to do now is I'd like to see, as I'm entering these notes, I'd like to see them in quick scribe because that way we can see the notation and not just a bunch of little orange lines. Um, and we have the right and the left. I'd like to do the right hand first, so let's hide the left hand. And we can do that, but you see this little icon down here, it kind of like a little list, like a window. Click on him and you'll see we can turn off the right, turn off the left, have nothing, put the right on alone, and that's the one I want to work with right now. I want to do the right hand of the Bach Minuet in G. And just because I can't see the end of that, I'm going to move this window over just a tad so we can see the end of that clef. Okay, there is another two things we should be aware of. First of all, it's in the key of G, and it's in 3-4 time. So in Digital Performer, by putting your cursor over the 4-4, you get a list and select the 3-4. Secondly, it's in the key of G major. So let's go up to the project window and go to the conductor track and change that key to G major from the first bar to the end of the sequence. Yes. OK. And exit that window. Now we're ready to put it in. We're in the right key signature, the right time signature. Now, the Bach contains uh, eighth notes in 3-4 times, so we have to tap. What, what we're going to do, we're going to open our, go to the studio and open your step record window, which you can uh, access by clicking here or by uh, typing a, a, a keystroke, Command-8. I'm going to use Command-8. Command-8. Now, as I was just saying, the Bach, while it's in 3-4 time and has 3 quarters in the measure, it has eighth notes, so we really have to count 1N, 2N, 3N. So that's what I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap that way, 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 way down here. 1N, and 2N, and 3N, and that's going to... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have... My mistake. <laughs> you know what happened. On the window here, I didn't tap on the eighth note. Now I've got to also go back to the first beat. This little window here tells you where the notes are going to be written in step time. They do not... They don't care what's up here or anywhere else. They only care where this is. And they only care what track you're going on. In this case, it's the right hand. Watch that when we do the left hand. 
So anyway, I'm going to be tapping those eighth notes, one and two and three, and I'm going to play at the same time, I'm doing that, the melody to the right hand. Okay, I went into that next measure just for a, a reason that I will explain uh, in a moment. Now, that's the Bach on top, but if we get rid of all of these bottom notes, the ones I was just using as a metronome, that's really what I'm doing, I'm, my left hand was acting as a metronome, we have the Bach the way we know it. Okay, but everybody knows that that some of these notes, like these should all be quarters, so Jeff, what, what, what's the deal here? You said we didn't have to go back and get the quarter and the dotted half and all that stuff. Well, we don't. We're going to do this. We're going to select all of these notes, and I'm going to go up to Region, Change Duration, and a new window opens, and if you want to, put it neatly down here so it's not in the way, but accessible. And it, it defaults to set a duration. Well, we certainly don't want to do that to these notes. What we would like to do is this. We would like to extend that eighth over to that note to make it a quarter. Likewise with him, likewise with him, likewise with all of these. So, apply, set this for extend releases and click apply. And you'll see, this looks just like the what you have in your book. Now, why did that last one not get extended? Because it doesn't have any other note after it to extend to. That's why I put it here so these would come out correctly. Now, let's see what steps we'd have to do to do the left hand. Okay, well, first of all, we've got to go down here and set the track to left hand. Secondly, we can get away with quarter notes now. I can tap quarters because the smallest note in the left hand is, in fact, a quarter. So we can count one, two, three, instead of one and two and three and. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my track selector and I'm going to select select left hand and get rid of the right hand for a moment just so we can see what this left hand's all about. So what else do I have to do? Can you guess? Take a look. There's something wrong in step record window. We have the left. We got the quarter selected. Okay. If you didn't see it, we have got to go back down here and set it for measure one. Step one, step, uh, 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 what do they call those steps? Step zero. Um, there are 960 steps in a whole note in, in, um, in, uh, in Digital Performer. So this represents, when it was 240 before, it actually represented an eighth note. Um, so it's first, uh, first measure, first beat, and n nothing else but that. So let's take a shot at this. I'm, oh, there was one little extra caveat here, and that is, you notice the left hand is set for the G clef. Let's go up here and click here on the mini menu here, and you see where it says Options? Go over to Track Options, and you'll see that, that the default is this, but we don't want that default. We want to go to the left hand. It says Use Default. We don't want to do that. We want to make him the bass clef. So we say OK, and now he's a bass clef. I could have done it in the G clef, but everything would have been written miles below it. So the F clef is what we really want. Anyway, so now I'm going to tap quarter notes even lower than where the actual notes are in the piece. And while I do it, I'm just going to play the notes in the right hand that correspond to those beats. But I can stop. Like I said, I'm in step time. And then one more, just to get into that next bar. OK. So again, what, what, what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of the low notes and eliminate them. We're then going to go and grab all these notes. And I'm going to extend the releases with the duration window, like so. And there is your left hand exactly, except for measure 5. Ev everything's exactly like we see it. Go back to the track selector, hit the right hand, and let's play our little masterpiece here.
very funky piano sound on that. It's got vibrato to it. Okay, so anyway, that's the trick. Tap. You do have little things to be careful of. Make sure he is enabled. Make sure he's set at the right insert point. Make sure it's the right track. Make sure you have the lowest common denominator for the notes you're going to be typing in. And you're, the tapping you're doing is, in fact, the, uh, the count you need for that rhythm. Um, so anyway, I hope you understand what I just did. I hope you en enjoy it. Play around with it a little bit. It's a lot of fun, particularly when you're making stuff up. As I said, in the homage to Liszt, particularly, I set the thing for 16ths, and that's what I played. I played everything in 16th notes. I never, I never even did this particular uh, uh, technique, but discovered it shortly thereafter. And realize that if if you are just if you just want to play and just know where you are in the score, just tap the rhythm, uh, tap I'm sorry, tap the meter. And if you tap the meter and then eliminate the hand tapping that meter, you end up with the the notes the way they should be written. Anyway, I hope it helps. I'd like input, questions, suggestions, comments, and um, until my next uh, tutorial, be well. <laughs>